Hey, hey, it's TDA, and today I want to show you a more complicated level of this amazing puzzle slash factory game called Real Grade. Hello, Administrator. Our once proud level 2 city has now de-leveled. Without the trucks, our furniture factory output could not reach our city, and without that factory, we all lost our jobs. The poor and desperate have been signing lifetime contracts with other colonies just for a chance to leave. Please save our city, we've worked hard to build a home on this colony. If you can upgrade the level, city to level 2, then the factory can start supplying the city with furniture once again. Nameless null of null, location unknown. I'm getting spam now, apparently. Welcome to Ministrator. Furniture, furniture, furniture. This region used to rely on furniture as the major industrial chain. Without the core furniture demand from a level 3 city, the balance between supply and demand broke. Your task is to upgrade the city into a level 3 city and assemble a balance and assemble balance for the future economy. Okay, yeah, so furniture, apparently. Uh, let's see, we have furniture assemblers over here. In this level, we only have a single goal, and that's upgrading the city. So you would think pretty straightforward, right? Well, actually, this game is, every single level in this game, I should say, is a puzzle. And if you know the answer to the puzzle, it's usually straightforward, and uh, not necessarily easy, but at least straightforward. But you're kind of overwhelmed with choices, especially at the beginning. So, for example, right now I have silica over here. I have a salt refinery. I have a plasticizer, which can make plastic from oil. We have a water pump over here. Uh, by the looks of it, we only have the single water pump, so that's interesting. We have some oil wells over here. We have furniture assemblers, which are going to use the plastic in order to make furniture. We have a lot of oil. We have a lot of oil. Uh, we have some coal over here. And we have more salt refineries over here. We have more silica over here. And actually one silica quarry all the way in the corner. We also have only 11,000 yen to work with. So that's actually not a lot. That will give us like something like four production lines maybe. Um, but that's about it. And most notably we also have no way of exporting anything off this map. So no zeppelins coming in or anything like that. So that's also something we need to take into account. Now a nice touch in the game is actually that it shows you what you can and cannot build on this map. So for example there's no copper, no additional water on the map, no iron. So all of these industries we don't have to worry about. However that just leaves enough um, to that we do have to worry about. And figuring out which ones to pick first and how to make money initially and how to speed things up in order to actually beat the time that we want to beat is going to be vital. Um... Specifically, because we only have a city, we should probably focus on a level 0 demand first. So water, salt, wire or steel. So considering we can't make either of the last two, we're going to need to bring in some water or salt. We do have the single water pump over here. We have a salt refinery and we have two salt refineries over here. Again, what is also important to take into account is thinking about what we already have. Because we can use this salt refinery, but we don't necessarily need to use all of them. Considering we already have two over here... It's a lot more efficient to build a silica line to these two and then upgrade that and make sure that we don't have to ever build a second refinery ever again. Well, maybe we do, but at least initially we have two that we can serve at the same time. And make an output line to the city and we should be good to go. In addition to that, maybe we should focus on the water pump as well. Set up a line for that because why not? I mean, um, it's a single line to the city and it's actually all the water we have. Now, think ahead a little bit. Once this city grows into a level 1 city, it's going to require energy, concrete or widgets. We can't make widgets because we don't have the materials for that. So we're going to need to supply the city with either energy or concrete. Concrete also uses water, so we're not going to make a huge amount of that. Alternatively, energy, um, we could actually easily make. We have some steam vents over here, which is just raw energy being produced from a very expensive... Theo um, geothermal factory or we can make it from either oil or coal not entirely sure yet which one we're going to pick but let's start with the basics first okay so let's start with the silica i build another silica quarry over here i build a very straightforward um, supply line over here and there's two salt refineries now there's a couple of things already going on here i make sure this is a a heightened track so this is completely flat just to optimize the throughput makes it a little bit more expensive so that's not always a free thing to do but um, right now I think the cost of 
making sure this track is completely level will benefit it because this is going to be high throughput. I expect that we're going to be building another couple of these quarries over here, maybe even double up on the track. So I left the room for a secondary station over here and a secondary station over here so that we can actually connect two lines to the salt refineries over here. Then I have the salt refinery just straightforward in a little circle over here supplying to the city. And it's also worth noting that we need to supply workers to these refiners in order for them to actually work. Um, and we only have six workers at the moment. So again, that's one of the constraints we need to take into account. Similarly, I went for the water pump line over here. It's a very straightforward single line, with, which is again raised because I'm expecting to bring resources to the plasticizer over here. And that just means I can keep those completely flat. Or alternatively, I might have wanted to raise that. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, this track might get into in the way. And raising it off the floor just makes sure that's a non-issue. But again, that does come at a cost. With this basic production out of the way, the real question is what are we going to do with leftover money? Now, keep in mind, I do need about 2,500 for the actual trains. So the real question is, are we going to spend the remainder of the money towards the next tier of production? So energy? Or not, because if we put the energy, uh, the money into the bank, not the energy, we're actually going to gain money from that. So we're making money by not spending it, but by not building anything, we're also not making money from that industry. Now, initially, the city is not going to accept much energy, so we're not going to make much money anyway. So I'm thinking maybe we should lay down the tracks, uh, kind of meta game it. The tracks are relatively cheap. And then put down the production buildings as soon as we are confident we can actually finish the entire production line. Put down the train for that as well. Two trains actually because we need to transport the coal to the energy uh, plant and then the energy to the city. So we might as well wait with actually building all of that until we are confident that we're going to make some money. Um, I didn't, I'm not going to go for the oil for the energy production because honestly all these tubes are going to get kind of in the way. Uh, the oil is also on this hill over here, which makes it really inconvenient, while the coal is actually on the flat terrain, so we have no height issues there. So this is all optimization choices that you can make. Yeah, can you finish the level with making other choices? Sure, but again, we're trying to beat the time. So this is the second stage of the production I'm going to go for. So this is a coal power plant with some coal mines over here that I can expand further down the back and then I can transport the actual energy to the city. And as you can see, if I would actually build this right now, I would not have enough money left for all the trains. Although I could borrow some money, but that's going to cause me to pay interest, which is actually going to slow down my future progression. So I don't necessarily want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take down these facilities. Uh, again, we're in planning mode at the moment, so this actually doesn't cost anything. I'm also going to destroy the stations because stations do actually cost us money. Um, why is this going up? That is, um, it's a good thing I actually see that right now because that's not what I want, of course. I want this thing to be nice and square and go up like this. Um, so this is all nice and tidy and doesn't go up or down to slow down my trains. Okay, so I think we're ready to add some trains and get going. Okay, so all the trains are driving. As you can see, we have some first silica coming in already. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is upgrade some of these stations because I have multiples of three in my trains so every train is a um is a engine with three of these things so as soon as you have at least three of these that means it can unload and offload in one go and that just makes things a lot more efficient the same thing i'm actually going to do over here with the water I'm not entirely sure that's needed so that's actually uh, maybe a bad decision on my part but at least for now that will do. I'm actually going to put everything in the bank. So I'm actually going to earn some interest. As you can see, 31 already. Um, and we should see our first salt coming in. The city is growing. And we're off to the races. And I'm going to add in a third train over here. Because honestly, the main bottleneck is the throughput on the silica line. As you can see, the salt refiners have no problem keeping up with the uh, salt that they're actually getting right now. So in order to speed everything up, it's just a, a matter of looking at what's the uptime on your factories. The lower it is, that means it's either overproducing, and so this, the supply is not getting picked up quickly enough, or it's not getting enough resources. As you can see, the salt refineries are working quite well, um, but adding in another train is probably going to do the trick just fine. I'm going to check on the water as well. The third station is really not needed, I think, so let's remove that. That's not what I wanted to do. 
Yeah, let's do that. That's going to refund me some money, but also save me on some upkeep. Making a fair amount of interest right now. So how much do I have in the bank? I have 4,000 in the bank, 4,500 in total, more or less. I'm making a fair amount of interest as well. If you compare that with, with the income from revenue, it's actually offsetting the entire cost and then some. So keeping that money in the bank was probably a good decision. Um, the city is growing fairly fast now. So I think we're almost ready to start up the production of the energy. And just make sure we have all of that up and running before we actually uh, turn the city into the first level. Now, as a side note, in case you were wondering, you can actually store checkpoints and restore checkpoints. So if you did the first half of the level and you're thinking like, okay, this is probably as optimal as it's going to get, save that checkpoint. And then if for whatever reason you don't actually make the deadline, you can always go back, restore this checkpoint without having to do the entire level all over again. Now, you can only ch save one checkpoint, so make sure that if you override them, you have it's optimal enough. But it's a fairly easy way to kind of min-max your gameplay. Okay, time to get all of that money out of the bank. Withdraw money. There we go. Don't don't borrow anything. We can actually lend a whole lot of money right now. And let's start building some coal mines first. Um, something like this. And this. Probably two at first. Let's let's not overdo it. Spending too much money is a very good way of actually losing the game. Um, yep, this looks fine. Then we should add some of these stations to this. There's going to be more of them after this, but we should probably delete those for the moment. And let's add a train to this. Let's make that a customer again. And my signature setup with one engine and two of those. Um, I have three of those actually, three of those carriages. Okay. Um, now we actually do need to assign some workers. We actually do have workers now, so that's a good thing. And, and then we need to put in a train station as well, of course. Let's make it nice and tidy so it's actually connected in line with the other one. And then again, let's make sure we actually have a delivering station, otherwise this won't work. Um, are we going to have a secondary line here? Maybe. Maybe is the answer. So if we do it like this, that should work. And then let's have another custom engine with those three. There we go. We are already producing some energy. This is actually going to help grow the city. So I'm doing it a little bit earlier than we reach level one because it's actually going to kickstart the production. As long as we have enough storage, that should actually work out quite well. Actually should add in another one of these trains as well. Just to speed up this a little bit. It's actually, well, it's actually debatable what's best. You could actually double up a train as well. That is slightly more efficient um, if you are not overproducing anything and then it becomes more efficient. So what I'm actually going to do, if I need to upgrade these trains any further, I am actually just going to double up these trains. So not build more trains, but make the train longer because that is in the end more efficient than building a whole lot of small trains. However, initially, because there is not a steady flow of production just yet, making these smaller trains is actually slightly more efficient because they can just get the resources to the city as fast as they uh, get produced, while the larger train would only... Um, go around once and then grab it everything that's currently there then make another whole circle so this just makes sure the throughput is a little bit more stable the difference is really really minor by the way so if you have a preference for one or the other that will work just fine but look we upgraded our city and that means it should now be accepting energy as well so um we have two and a half thousand already actually i actually didn't take too much note of that so let's build some more coal mines. So I'm actually going to double up on this specific train. Why? Because, well, it's only a single track. It's going to drive up and down. It's going to go pretty fast because of that. So making sure we have one long train is actually a lot more efficient than having two smaller ones because they would be crossing each other and then slowing each other down by doing that. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to extend this as well so it can unload in one go. There we go. And then it just needs to turn around. So having the train actually turn around is a little bit inefficient uh, with larger trains. But I think this track is short enough to warrant not having to completely drive in a circle. 
And I'm also going to add in a secondary delivery train for the energy, just again a secondary train initially, just to make sure this never fills up on storage, because it, it will only fit four storage, so if this ever caps out, that means production is going to go to waste. So the energy production is actually going a lot slower than I expected, and the main bottleneck seems to be actually getting the coal fast enough to the station. So, mm, let's see. If I increase the height of this track a little bit, similar to the one that we already had, and we can probably build a secondary line something like this. Let's see. Um, let's bring that one down, all the way down to the floor. We can go right under here. Now this train is going to be slightly less efficient. So it's finicky to get under there. However, um, having the trains actually deliver the coal more efficient is going to matter in the long run. Um, let's see, do I have money in the bank? Yes, I do, because I was getting a lot of interest on that. And let's double up on that train, and there we go. Now we should have two trains delivering a lot of coal to this power plant and that also means we should probably build a second coal power plant just to make sure we're never wasting any production there we should have enough workers for that so that's not a problem and i think by now that should give us enough um, energy production let's see how is the city faring yeah the main bottleneck does seem to be energy and we are getting close ish to the next level where we're going to need that furniture to come in as well. Okay, so we have some pretty decent energy production now up and running, but we definitely need to focus on that furniture next. Maybe add in another energy supply just to make sure that it actually works like I wanted to. Now, it's really tempting to use the plasticizer all the way out here, but honestly, most of the oil is on this side of the map. So I'm actually thinking maybe we should localize the plastics facility, uh, plastics production a little bit more so we can easily feed it into this thing. Now, Let's see, plaster sizer. Can we build those? Yes, we can. Can we build them on the slope? We can't, obviously. Um, but what we could do is build it something like this uh, on this side, and then we can bring in the oil. Alternatively, we could actually maybe produce it up here like this, and then just bring the oil down, or the plastic down, that is. That might be the more smart solution. Um, yeah, yeah, I like that idea actually. So, let's do that like this. Let's also build an oil thingy. Where is it? Oil well. And let's do that something like this. Then how are we going to bring in the oil? I think we're going to bring it all the way around. We have this thing in the middle, which is kind of in the way. But what we could do is build a nice neat circle, like so. There we go. And we can connect a lot of oil to that. Um, like so. Let's make sure that is actually up and running there as well. And then the first oil line is going to be out here. And we need some money for that. Need a loan? Yes, I need a loan. Because I think now is the time to really start scaling up. And we can do that without money. Assign some workers and make sure we actually have a train driving over here. Now we can do the industrial engine, which is a lot better at climbing. Um... It actually takes quite a bit of materials as well. So that should be fine and it doesn't uh, struggle as much with these slopes. And look, we leveled up the city. So now it's a race to level 3. And that means that we actually need to make sure this furniture production is going anywhere. So let's make sure this is actually connected up. And in the train... And this can be our default one that we are using all the time. Make a little bit more money. There we go. And now we're bringing in the furniture as well. 
Now we also need to watch out for the demand because as you can see even though we are not yet producing the furniture it will be coming in soon but we're also going to need probably some more salt because as you can see we have plenty of energy but not as much salt and we have been neglecting this production facility uh, for a long time so it doesn't make it makes sense that we should focus on that a little bit more as well. So I think step one is just upgrading the actual throughput of this facility we already have. Upgrading the station goes a long way to doing exactly that. And of course we also need to make sure that the trains that we're using are maximized in terms of capacity. With that increased supply of silicon as you can see the salt refineries are starting to struggle. So let's build another one of those as well. And of course we need to turn it around so it looks nice and tidy. We need to make sure that it has workers and of course we need to make sure it's actually connected. Ooh, there we go. Um, to the one we already have. So now we have one more. Um, do we have enough supply for that? Well, we can actually double up on that as well. Well, maybe not, not, not a lot of those engines. This will do. It looks kind of funny like this, but uh, if you prefer the look where it is on the back, that's a definite option to do to go for as well. Comes down to the same thing. This this might look a little tidier. I don't know. Um, it's easier to keep track of how much resources there are on the thing. You do it like this in my opinion. So from this point on it all becomes a balancing act. And honestly it looks like the main thing that we need now is furniture. So that means optimizing the oil production. Um, again let's make sure it's nice and tidy. There we go. This will bring in some more oil, which will bring in more plastic. We might need to double up on this as well. How much is a plasticizer? 2,000, so we're going to save up for that as well. And honestly, near the end of the game, getting a loan is not the worst thing in the world because that will actually allow you to speed up the production and you are working on a deadline. It doesn't matter if you're out of money at the end, as long as you make the deadline. Okay, adding in some more silica because these things were getting... Um, exported really quickly just to make sure we don't have a bottleneck in raw production because as you can see the, the stockpile in these salt refineries is already gone. Uh, similarly for the coal power plants are actually struggling to get enough coal although the trains are full. Let's just add in maybe another coal mine or two just to be safe. And let's double up on the trains for the oil as well. What happened to this train? Uh, the train got messed up. I don't like that. The other one okay no i somehow managed to completely destroy the layout of my train over here so let's see we're still quite low on furniture but we just added in a couple of oil wells so hopefully that should fix itself and uh, we're also really low still on soil and water so mm, let's upgrade the water production that's a really straightforward way of making sure we get some more water uh, or at least some more baseline production how are we doing here these are still completely dried. Um, the salt refineries actually have a hard time keeping up. So we could upgrade those as well. It just makes them 50% uh, faster. That actually adds up to be quite a lot in the long run. Rather than putting in a whole secondary production line. It's usually easier at the end game to upgrade your production uh, facilities that you already have. Although it's a more expensive. I mean it only upgrades them with 50%. And while adding in a new one, it's actually half the cost for double the production, but you would need to make sure you actually have the whole supply line thing. So it's a trade-off. These plasticizers are actually really slow, so I'm going to upgrade those as well, because as you can see, I'm bringing in enough oil. That's not a problem. But the production of these actual things is really, really, really slow. Similarly, we also need to upgrade, I think, the coal mines a little bit. Bank, do you want to leave, uh, loan me some more money? Let's see you do and that's very helpful so we can actually speed upgrade these coal mines to make sure we get some more energy production well with a little less than five minutes to go we still need 40 population so we're going to cut it close but maybe we'll make it i don't know let's see what do we need we need the base materials the most but we're actually balancing it out quite nicely right now um, but more of everything will never be a bad thing to do in a game like this Getting a little bit nervous here, so I just added in a couple of silica quarries and another solder refinery just to make sure we can keep up with the huge amount of base level requirements. Um, might as well 
we need four more population. We have two and a half minutes. I think we'll make it, but yeah, two minutes to spare and we did it. But as you can see, it gets quite frantic near the end. And honestly, I like that. I mean, it gives another uh, reason for you to optimize your gameplay rather than just building trains. And if that's your thing, just building trains and make them look nice, you can definitely do that as well. But it just adds another dimension to it. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're still here, you're awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos. It does really help me out. And I hope to catch you in the next one.